Welcome to part three, where we are going to begin drawing free body diagrams. If you're not sure what in the world that could be, I honestly have no idea why it's called a free body diagram. I don't know. It, the term makes no sense to me. Um, but whatever, you need to know that that's what we will call a force diagram. Everybody take a moment and think, what things would be included in a force diagram? This should not take you long. If you answered forces to yourself, you're correct. It's forces. That's it. That's the only thing that goes in a free body or force diagram. Okay, that's it. Um, and now what we're going to actually do in each of these various uh, examples here, there's, you know, it goes through part D, right? What we're going to do with example one here and all those four examples is draw the forces acting on the object being described. So let's actually do part A together, and then I'm going to let you guys um, think a little bit about parts B, C, and D. And if you're stuck, you're not sure what kind of forces are acting, then go back to the first page of notes where we talked about the types of forces. Okay, and then uh, in, use that list to help you decide, okay, what kinds of forces are acting on the crate or the box or the stapler or the hanging objects. Okay, so part A. First thing is draw a picture, like always, right? That's how I tell you to start everything in physics. So if we've got a crate and it's resting on a horizontal surface, there we are, there's our horizontal surface. Um, if the crate's just sitting there and we want to think about what kinds of forces are acting on it, it doesn't say anybody's applying a force to it, but there is gravity. There's always gravity. So we'll put mg downwards. Okay, and if it's just at rest on the horizontal surface, not tending to go anywhere, that means there must also be a normal force acting upwards, holding it up. Stop for a moment and think, what if there were no normal force here? Like, uh, the horizontal surface is a really weak table, like it's made of eighth-inch thick plywood or something, if they even made that. It would break because the table would not be able to supply a sufficient normal force to balance out the weight, result being the normal force would be less than mg and it would accelerate downwards. Okay, so in this case we can say, look, it's at equilibrium, n equals mg. Okay, pause the video for, a, I don't know, a minute or two um, to give yourself a little time to work out b, c, and d. Okay, go ahead, pause. Pause it. Pause right now. Thanks. All right, let's consider B a little bit. Right here, this is wrong. Okay, it has some good things, right? Um, we said it's accelerated by a horizontally applied force, so I've got that there, that's my big F, across a rough, that is not frictionless, surface. Okay, so that's my little F there in the opposite direction. But when you're drawing a force diagram, you always include all of the forces. Even if they seem like they're not relevant, you know, all the forces, like gravity and the normal force. Um, if you were thinking, why would we need those? It's not moving up or down. The reason you would need those is because, if you recall, friction is fun. All right, so you would need, actually, the normal force in order to get the frictional force, since they are related. All right, um, if you mess that one up, then maybe you want a little time to revise C, uh, but I don't have that kind of time in this video, so pause it if you need it, but I'm going to keep on going. For part C, we've got a stapler resting on an inclined plane. All right, an inclined plane is a slope, like that. I'm sorry if you didn't know that word, but there it is. It's an inclined plane, and it says it does not slide down due to friction. Um, if we draw, I'm going to draw the boxiest stapler ever. There, it's a stapler, just trust me, okay? There it is. It's got gravity pulling down on it. Remember, gravity always goes straight, straight down, right? Uh, if this stapler were to slide, of course, it would go like this away, down the incline. Uh, but that's because the sum of the forces would be in that direction, not because gravity changes directions. Gravity will always be straight down. The normal force, you should have drawn it not straight up.
perpendicular to the surface. Um, if there were no friction, by the way, it would have to slide down. I, I think everybody can see that those two forces, since they are not in opposite directions, don't actually cancel out. They would add up to like a little bit in that direction. So absent the friction force up the incline, it would have to slide. All right, this in particular would be static friction since it says that it's uh, just sitting there, right? It's not sliding. All right, last part here, part D. It says we've got a string attached to the ceiling tied to a hanging mass, All right? And then, oh my gosh, there's another one tied to that. Well, here's the ceiling. Here's the first string, the first object, and then there, okay, there we are. All right. Now, if you're drawing all the forces, um, probably we should call these things like M1 and M2. I'm going to call the bottom one M1. Oh, that's a 1. There we go. And then the top one's going to be M2. And we'll call the tension in the lower section of string T1. All right, well, T1 is going to pull up on the bottom mass. T1. Meanwhile, gravity will pull down on it. So I'll label that M1G. All right, for the top block, uh, we have tension 2 pulling up on it, gravity pulling down on it. I'm kind of running out of space to write this. I'll write it over here. We've got M2G pulling down on it. And there's actually a third force pulling down on it. No, it is not M1G. Sorry, it's not actually the weight of the other object. The other object's weight is the force of gravity acting on that object. The force of gravity on that object, uh, on M1, cannot act on M2. In fact, the force it's pulling down on it is... This is a rhetorical question, but you can say it out loud. Yes, it is the tension, T1, pulling down on it. Remember, tension goes both directions in a string or rope, right? It's going to pull up on the bottom object, but down on the top one. Um, if you're thinking, Mr. Errico, isn't T1 equal to M1G? Yes, it is true. They are equal in magnitude. However, that need not be the case. Um, you could imagine that if this were happening in an elevator, this is actually going to be a question that you guys will be assigned later. If this were happening in an elevator and the whole elevator were moving up, then those tensions do not in any way equal the weights of the objects. Or if, the, if it's accelerating downwards. Either way, the tensions don't have to be equal to the weights of the objects unless the whole system is sitting still. All right, I think that's all the time we got. Um, if you need to look at example two, because tonight, tonight's homework does have um, a couple of questions where there's some vector addition of forces involved. Oh my gosh. That's example two, so you should look at the work that I have for that. However, you guys did vector addition last unit, right? That's the ones where we like, had three vectors and it said what's A plus B plus C, right? And you broke it down into components and added up the I components and added up the J components, that's all that's going on in example two. So is it anything really and truly different? Actually, no. It's just find the components, add them up, and then apply it to the equation F equals MA. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.